What up YouTube? Just doing another update since it has been a while since the last one. The last one being the I'm back official start of the grow journey. Uh, so this is where we are so far. Up to date, it's been a couple weeks since then, about a month actually since then. We are officially 100% in the grow room. The grow room is 100% done inside and out, even the little cosmetic stuff I mentioned. Uh, that's where we are now. Sitting down because that fan blow across the microphone be real loud, so hopefully you guys don't hear it. But yeah, it's where we are. Grow room done, grow room sealed. A few things have changed since the last update. Uh, got a couple stuff set up in here as well. So uh, just to kind of go over everything real briefly of where we are. We uh, do have our CO2 monitor up. Uh, I think it's showing backwards in here, but that's 1,700. So 1,700, really high, mostly just for me breathing. Uh, I actually try to keep it pretty high, around 1,500 at all times, usually just for me hanging out in here, so it really doesn't take much. At night, I do turn on that little propane, butane heater, because it gets a little chilly, and that shoots the CO2 up. Sometimes I do have to turn it off or vent it out. I don't want it to get over 3,000, you know, anything over 2,000 is where I kind of start to dial it back, because I don't want to walk in here and, you know, pass out or something at 3,000 ppms or some crazy high amount that's, you know, lethal to humans, even if the plants will do fine. And these are seedlings, you know, just started germinating not too long ago. They're not going to use too much anyhow. I mean, it's arguable to even have CO2 supplementation at this point, but since it's just things that I'm doing passively, breathing or heating, I figured why not? There was one video that I watched that did a 45 day germination test with and without CO2. You can look it up on YouTube and Google it uh, as well. I think there's a little study on it, like a little document paper. Uh, but yeah, within the 45, the first 45 days of germination, uh, one with, one without CO2, all other factors were the same. Um, the one with CO2 outperformed it anywhere from 60 to 200% on all metrics, you know, number of leaves, leaf weight, root weight, you know, stem height, stem weight, et cetera, et cetera. So I figured why not? If it's going to be passively increased, might as well do it. Already got the monitor up there. No CO2 tank yet. Obviously that will be monitored. You know, that will monitor the CO2 tank. When I get that, I'm in no rush right now because it's already plenty high enough. These things don't eat enough to really need much more than just my breath. Uh, when we when they take off into real into real veg, not just germination, then I will put a CO2 tank in here and I'll show you guys that as well. Aside from that, uh, since we were going to have two 800 watt mammoth 10 bar lights, which ran two before, fantastic. Unfortunately, only got one. Hiccups along the way, things happen, but do have. The single one, uh, and since I don't have two to do a side by side, I was gonna do the recipe given to me, which uh, I ran in soil uh, with a friend and worked fantastic. Uh, so instead, I figured, why not? Let's. I mentioned doing Athena as the other side by side. I figured we're gonna go to Coco, go to Athena. It's uh, kind of geared towards hydroponic, and this is a uh, halfway between. You know, it's a soilless medium, so why not do it? Always seen great stuff online about it. Um, cultivations that I know that run it do a one so I got the whole lineup uh, this is the cleanse behind that you got the cow mag farther back behind that is the PK you got the grow a and the grow B uh, I don't have bloom a and blue B simply because I don't need it we're not in bloom yet so I'll get that when it's time to get that uh, they actually recommended when I asked them for their blended lineup because this is the blended not the pro if I needed the balance if I'm not using RO, and they said, no, that's only for RO. So I did not get balance because I am gonna try to run filtered, you know, dechlorinated, sediment removed tap water, basically, but filtered to remove, you know, all the stuff we don't want in it. Uh, and try to do it that way, just because RO does waste a lot of water and I really don't wanna have to set up a whole RO system if I don't have to, and I wouldn't wanna waste water if I don't have to. Uh, obviously you can't control everything when it is tap water, even if you're removing some of the things out of it. Uh, the filter really doesn't affect the PPMs or EC. Uh, the EC of it is anywhere from like 700 to 1,000, uh, which is like 1 or 0.7, depending on how you guys look at it. Uh, but a lot of that is not stuff the plants use, so it doesn't fully affect it as we would see in EC when, you know, putting nutrients in there. Uh, I did check the uh, rep water report for my area. There is a little bit of CalMag, you know, calcium, magnesium, manganese, some sodium, some other stuff, but none of it was in too great of values, small amount of potassium. So I figured all I gotta do is run this stuff in the lower rec lowest recommended feeding, which per the bottle is two milliliters per gallon. Per their feeding schedule, it's like eight. It seemed very strong. So I just went with the lowest one on the bottle. Uh, 
even though when I emailed them, they said go with the one online, which is the one that I have here laminated from the hydroponic shop. But yeah, other than that, I'm just using the small boy water filter, which I believe you can see the box up there. It's sitting out that way. Let me sit down so that fan doesn't blow across this. The only thing I'm using that is not Athena though, is my silicate, which is Vitalize from Mills. Uh, I got this as a sample from the hydroponic shop because I was asking about Power SI and they were out at the time. He said, try this, exactly same uh, main ingredient, which if uh, you're familiar with silicates, there's two forms of silicate. One being the very expensive, like this in Power SI, and the other one being uh, silicate potassium, I believe is what it is, and the other one's like monohydrate, which is this one. I might be getting that confused slightly, so don't 100% quote me on that. Basically, the more expensive, much more concentrated, this is like a milliliter or two for a gallon, uh, works better. The uptake's very quick, if not instantly, I, I want to say it was like within a day or two, like it's very readily available for the plants. Uh, whereas if you use the other one, the cheaper version, the more common version, uh, it is not. It takes much longer for it to break down. Uh, then it's readily available, you know, after it's broken down, obviously, which can take two to three weeks if I'm remembering correctly. Obviously, if you're in a soil, that may not matter to you because everything's sitting, microbes are doing the work. You're kind of, you know, you're trying to make it thrive with microorganisms. But uh, I'm not, I'm in cocoa, so faster the better. And it also makes it work, you know, fantastic for a foliar spray uh, to stop vertical growth. I'm just gonna add it in each time. Don't think I'll have an issue. These lights are pretty powerful. Speaking of the lights and the CO2, which is why I think these little seedlings, by the way, uh, with the four purple punch and the four Bruce Banner, uh, are at 30% on this 800 watt light. That's intense. I didn't think they'd be able to handle it. They've shown no stress so far. The only one that's not doing great is one of the Bruce Banner, but it was not doing great underneath the CFL. Uh, just a bunk seed. So I need to find out the exact breeder on those because the other one's uh, Barney's Farm. The Bruce Banner did not tell me, so I actually had to ask because I'm not getting it from them again. That's horrible. Uh, I should have went with the Gorilla Glue, but we'll do that next round. But yeah, I'm actually going to switch over, I think, to Power SI. Even though they're the same thing, I want to go with it just because I've seen what it can do. Not just because I think it's better, just because it makes me feel more comfortable. So really no reason. And they're the same price, so you know, why not? Uh, but I think that's it. That's the update. That's what we're using for nutrients. This is the way the grow is working. There's the CO2. Obviously running the, mini, the uh, portable. Won't have a mini split until later, until I have at least two lights, if not three lights total in here. So you know, one or two more additions. Uh, all the stuff up on the rack used to be just kind of storage. Now it is storage for in here. Uh, you know, storage for stuff here, not storage for my own personal storage. Uh, in this blue box is actually my perlite cocoa mix. Uh, I went with the 20% perlite, 80% cocoa. If I think I need more aeration or better drainage, I will increase it to 30% perlite, 70% cocoa. But right now, it all seems to be good. It seems to be draining pretty good. Uh, and this is Cocoa Grow from Botanic Air. Uh, it's already pre-buffered, which is why I went with that because I don't want to have to worry about it, you know, latching on a cow mag and ionized and whatnot gets a little bit over my head at that point, and I'd rather not risk it, especially being you know, so new to cocoa. Uh, that being said, nutrients and everything covered. Uh, yesterday was my first feeding to runoff, you know, to waste. Uh, you can't see it in the back of them, but there's some back there puddled up, which is why it's sitting on a slant, just so it runs away. I need to get a better tray and everything for them, so that's just kind of my half-assed setup for now. Uh, aside from that, that's pretty much everything in a nutshell. That's where we are so far. Uh, as they progress, I'll make sure to do another update, make it not so far in between, and obviously try to get things expanded each grow. Next grow, hopefully we'll have two lights, rock for that three lights, so on and so forth, until we can add on that additional room I mentioned before. But that is it. Any questions, any concerns, anything you wanna ask, anything I should cover, let me know. If not, peace out YouTube, happy growing. You guys take it easy.